hello everyone i hope you all are doing very well and uh, in this session we are going to discuss about sharp ratio so basically this sharp ratio is widely used matrix in finance domain because of its ability to evaluate the performance of investment or po any portfolio right it measures risk adjusted returns risk adjusted returns specifically the excess return that is return above the risk free rate that is what is the per unit of volatility or risk right now we are going to take an example as well and i am also going to tell you that how we need to calculate it but first let's discuss the basic part of it a normal formula to calculate the sharp ratio is the difference of expected portfolio return that is rp with risk free return that is rf divided with standard deviation of portfolio return that is sigma p right so you can write it like expected portfolio return minus risk free return divided with standard deviation of portfolio return that is going to call it as a sharp ratio right now let's first discuss what this evaluation matrix says first point is higher returns are better higher value of sharp ratio is better so higher sharp ratio indicates better risk adjusted return it also implies that portfolio is generating more return for each unit of risk which is taken point number 2 is interpretation a sharp ratio which is greater than 1 if the sharp ratio is greater than 1 it is going to be considered as a good it is going to be considered as a good as it indicates that portfolio is delivering return that compensate for the risk whatever is taken sharp ratio 0 if your sharp ratio is 0 or less than 0 it means that portfolio is not adequately compensating the risk which is taken so this interpretation we can make with the help of sharp ratio now third point is comparison we can use sharp ratio for comparing different investments for different portfolios so let's say if there is investor 1 investor 2 and if you want to compare the portfolio returns of first invert investor and second investor then you can utilize the sharp ratio for it as well as higher sharp ratio is going to amplify better risk adjusted returns right now point number 4 is risk free rate impact right so sharp ratio adjust for risk free rate a higher risk free rate will decrease the sharp ratio as the excess return that is the numerator is going to be higher in the base rate right okay now what considerations we can take for the sharp ratio the first one is volatility measurement the sharp ratio penalizes volatility or risk basically portfolios with higher volatility is going to give the lower sharp ratios all else being equal as well as annual returns and risk ensure that returns and volatility are on a consistent basis for example annualized return and volatility for meaningful comparisons what are some limitations that it completely or heavily relies on historical data and assumptions basically it assumes a normal distribution of returns which may not always hold true especially during extreme market conditions right now what are the various practical uses use the sharp ratio to evaluate the performance of investment strategies mutual funds or portfolios it also helps in decision making by comparing investments based on risk adjusted returns rather than absolute return right so it basically based on risk adjusted return rather than absolute return right that what is the risk taken accordingly which is the better one right now we can uh, just uh, go with the practical uses that it use the sharp ratio to evaluate performance of investment strategies mutual fund portfolios already discussed for decision making on the comparison investment risk based returns and it is a valuable tool for investors to access and compare investment performance 
taking into account the trade off between returns and risk so between return and risk what are the trade off we can go for sharp ratio na now uh, one example we can take that suppose you are comparing two investment portfolios portfolio a and portfolio b over a certain period and we are having following data let's say portfolio a the expected annual return is 12% standard deviation here is 15% and risk free return is 3% right so if you know the difference is expected annual return rp with risk free return divided by standard deviation of returns so if you are going to calculate 12 minus here if you are going to calculate 3 divided by 15 so it is 9 by 15 so 3 3 is 9 3 5 is 15 and 0.6 so here you are going to get result as a 0 0.6 that is the sharp uh, ratio for portfolio A, 0 0.6. Now for portfolio B, expected annual return is 10%. Expected annual return is 10%. And uh, risk-free return is 3%. And uh, standard deviation is 10%. That is 7 by 10. That is 0 0.7. So portfolio B's sharp ratio is 0 0.7 so obviously you can say that 0 0.7 is bigger that is portfolio b is having sharp ratio greater than portfolio a's sharp ratio right now since portfolio b is having higher sharp ratio so it implies that portfolio b is providing a better risk adjusted return compared to portfolio a for the given level of risk both portfolios have written above the risk free return that is 3% was the risk free rate so both are having uh, risk uh, return above that but portfolio b's higher return is relative to the risk results in a higher sharp ratio right so we can make some conclusions here portfolio b is going to preferred over portfolio a from a risk adjusted return perspective so if any investor is seeking risk adjusted return perspective then portfolio b is going to be preferred over portfolio a and investors seeking to maximize their risk adjusted returns may favor portfolio b which is based on sharp ratio calculations as well as the sharp ratio allows investors to objectively compare portfolios by considering both returns and risk so providing a useful matrix for decision making in investment management, right? So guys, I hope that this session is going to be useful for your study purpose. And please do subscribe, stay tuned for more such informative sessions. Have a very nice day, guys. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.